The last little bit, I've been doing lots of um, painting techniques on different textured paints. And what I thought I would do today was I would mix up a little batch of each one of those, paint them on a piece of board so you could compare them all, see which one you like the best, and then try them out. Now, I'm not going to have all the recipes in this one. Um, I'm going to, down in the description, I'll have a link to every one of those separate videos so you can pick out which one you like. You can go back and you can watch that video and it'll have complete step-by-steps uh, for you to mix up that recipe. So I'm doing chalk paint, uh, baking soda paint, salt and pepper paint, uh, sand paint, a sawdust paint, and a coffee grind paint. And they're all fabulous and the texture that they all make is, is really, really fun. So um, we're going to get started. I'm going to head out to my shed. So come and follow along and we'll put these recipes together. Like I said before, I've done videos on all of these techniques um, and I'll put a link down in the description for all of these recipes. So after you've watched this video, you've chosen which one you'd like to try, um, you can go back, you can watch that video and have a complete in-depth tutorial. And then I also have the recipe on those right in the video where you can screenshot it and save it to your phone. The first one I'm going to do is my homemade chalk paint. Um, I love this recipe. It's just a basic chalk paint um, recipe and it works great on all projects. No prep needed. And I'm just going to coat this piece of wood. And then we'll have that to compare with the other textured paints when we put them all together. So this is just the regular chalk paint and I'm doing it all in white because I think that will give us the best idea of what it looks like for texture when it's all dry and we'll show the best on the camera. The next one that we're going to do is the coffee grind paint. I love this. This is actually one of my favorite ones and you just save your coffee grinds out of your coffee machine, let them dry really well and then you can mix this recipe together and it kind of has like almost like a stucco look to it. And I love doing it on um, vases and ceramic pieces that uh, I have thrifted. And this is what the coffee grind paint looks like. Wet, has a really beautiful texture to it. And we'll just set this aside and let it dry. Okay, this one, sawdust paint. I love this one too. You save all your sawdust from your projects. Make sure it's really dry. Mix up this recipe and it creates an amazing texture too. And this is what the sawdust looks like wet. The next one is a salt and pepper paint. I was kind of skeptical the first time I tried this and wasn't sure um, how well it would work. And it turned out fantastic on the project that I did with, uh, with the salt and pepper paint. So now I'll show you what it paints up like. This recipe thickens up really fast. So you want to mix it and then use it right away and only mix up what you're going to use for that specific project because it won't, um, it doesn't store very well. And like I said, it thickens really fast. So if you're using it and it does start to thicken, add a little bit of water just to thin it out and then keep painting. And now we're going to do the sand paint. This is another one of my favorites. Actually, I love all of these techniques. You kind of just have to pick what you uh, would like to use for the type of project that you have. And uh, maybe just give every one of them a try on your different projects. And then pick out your favorite. Now the last one is just your basic baking soda paint. And I'm actually kind of leaning towards using this uh, formula more lately than my chalk paint. I just kind of like the texture of it better on my signs and um, I find it standing up just as well as my homemade chalk paint recipe. Okay, these have all dried and I'm going to put a second coat on all of these pieces of wood to give a true representation of what they look like when they're finished. So I'm gonna do that right now and then I'll show you the end result.
Okay, the salt and pepper one, after you've put on the second coat, I always like to sprinkle a little bit of the pepper on top and that just kind of gives it that stone look. Just sprinkle it lightly all over. Try not to sneeze. <laughs> and then just take the paintbrush and just dab it in. It makes a really awesome texture and there we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm just going to let them all dry and I'll be back and show you the end results. Okay. I have them all done and there's a little bit of difference in between the textured paints that makes it a little bit more original. The chalk paint and the baking soda paint, I don't see a whole lot of difference between it. Maybe the baking soda paint has a little tiny bit more of a fluffy texture to it. The salt and pepper paint, I love that little fleck of black from the pepper that it, it gives. And the coffee grind paint and the sawdust paint and the sand paint, all three of those are kind of similar but they do have a little bit of a difference in texture. So it's just kind of maybe whatever you have on hand. Um, if you have sand or you have sawdust or you have coffee grinds, just to make that type of a texture paint. And here's a little bit more of a close up. You can see the sand paint, the sawdust paint, and the coffee grind paint. And like I said, they're all three are kind of similar, but they do have a little bit of a different texture to them when it's finished and uh, they all work fantastic. And here's an up close of the salt and pepper paint. And I love that. I love using all four of these techniques on um, glass bottles and vases and it gives it that real rustic kind of cement or um, stucco look and it's just fun to kind of experiment and um, try them all out so like I said before if you I'm going to down in the description have a link to the uh, videos of each specific painting technique and you can check those out Thanks so much for watching today's video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to read them. I'll be sharing so many more DIY thrifting repurposing videos. So if you aren't already following along, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And that will let you know when I upload my next video. See you real soon. Take care and have a great day.